Hello and welcome back. OK, so this clock circuit is looking a little bit precarious and I think that is the, the next thing that we should convert to PCB with this nice little space that's reserved for it. Build's still working, which is good, nothing's come loose. But let's extract this. Right, so this circuit has three modes with three different clock sources and it's got the reset circuit which when activated it will count I think four ticks in order to hold the reset state while everything else cleans up. So let's go look at the design for that. Okay you're getting a voiceover for this bit. I had already built most of the schematic alongside the breadboard so I'm mostly tidying up adding connectors and the decoupling caps. The design rule check requires you flag everything that is deliberately disconnected. It seems annoying at the time, but it saved me from a non-functioning PCB a few times. I start the layout process by organising the components just so I can get a rough idea of the size. I want the width to match the pipeline so it's going to sit neatly underneath it, so it's only really the height that's variable. I pretty much start by pushing the components around just trying to get a rough feel for how the layout's going to work. I'm paying attention to the blue lines here which are showing the connections just so I can make sure I'm grouping stuff upright to make it easier to route the traces. Now because I've got interactive buttons on this one I actually need to pay attention to where they go so I want them around the edges so I can reach in and push them. Then the only thing I'm worried about is where the LEDs are going to go and the connectors. Now with the outline layout done, I can place it on my back plane. And then start on the traces. Most of my PCBs have big bundles of data lines, kind of 8 bits or 16 bits at a time. So there's a lot less connections here, but these are a lot less ordered. Fortunately, there's just multiple sections on here. So you've got three different clocks, the selector and the reset circuit, which don't have very much connectivity between them. So I'm mostly just routing them independently. The 
paying a lot more attention to VCC than ground because I'll be using a big fill for ground. So I just need to make sure that there's a path to connect it up. That's nice. It's worth putting a bit of time into the silk screen and filling in the copper layers just to clean it up. Stitching the ground planes and we're done. Okay, let's have a look at this. This was made to fit the space now this actually has a wider variety of components on it than any other board in my build so far. So we've got quite a few different logic chips, switches, 555 timers, got a crystal, we've got the little reset management chip, and we've got that N-channel MOSFET potentiometer, set of dip switches. I need to start sorting out the components to uh, put this together. I did get the stencil for it. Okay, I'm slightly worried my paste is getting a bit old. These ones look oddly offset. Okay, my paste was a bit more viscous than usual, but I think I've got pads everywhere. Okay, not so sure about that down there. Can I get this back? So this is the end channel MOSFET. watching one of Brian Locke's streams the other day he made a comment about 555s he was surprised when I mentioned I had been working with them recently now this circuit is basically a bunch of different clock generators and a selector with this triple state switch on it. This 153 is what actually does the selection. The pace isn't perfect on some of those pins, but I suspect it's going to be enough. Now, this little power management chip, one of these was the first surface mount chip I ever soldered, and to date it's the only surface mount chip I've ever soldered off camera. These are 10 microfarad. These are 100 nanofarad. They go next to each chip. This one actually just controls the reset interval.
These are 10Ks. It's what I'm using for my pull-ups. Right, now these are 2Ks, which are chosen resistance for my green LEDs. So a single 4.7K for the clock LED. Okay, it doesn't feel like there's any goo on there at all. This is a red LED and a blue one. And finally, I need three greens. Looks like I've nudged that chip. The capacitors I need for here, I don't have the values from in a standard range. But I did buy one of these selection books. Now these are 0603. So this one is on the clock line. So it needs 30 picofarads. Now I believe these 0603s are gonna sit on these pads okay. It's not ideal, but I think it will work. I think these days I wouldn't be too scared of soldering 0603 directly. Not with a stencil. Right, switches. So this is my single tick button. And then brake, which selects the single step mode, stopping any of the free running clocks. And trace mode is a slow clock whose speed can be adjusted by this potentiometer and you can watch code execute. And then run is the high speed clock that comes off this crystal from this clock divider circuit. Okay, let's hope that reflows. I need to very gently ease this out. And then I'm going to get set up for the hot air reflow. Now I've had this on a thermal plate, which is actually my 3D printer's heat bed, just giving it a little bit of a warm up. And now we go in nice and gently. Okay, feels like there wasn't any solder on one of those sides. That looks really good. So we've got four headers, we've got the potentiometer, dip switches, and I think I want to do the crystal as a socket. It's a five megahertz crystal I've been using at the moment. I've only got one of those, so I don't want to commit it to the board just yet. But I think if I put some turn pin headers in here, I can swap out, try a few different values once we've got the entire CPU on PCB and give it a bit of a try. That's wrong. How well does that sit? Not very good with the counting at the moment. Okay, I've just had a go with the file to see if I can make these sit a little bit flatter. Yeah, that's better.
Now I also added these standalone pins. They're connected to ground, but the, their only real purpose was to provide physical support. Almost forgot that guy. Okay, in theory that's done. Okay, that's not very promising. Okay, I think maybe this button may have been overheated a bit. Okay, well, I'm going to clear up my solder space and see if I can work out how to test this. Now, to test this, I shouldn't need much more than power. It's not going to line up, but that will. Okay, oh, that's not promising. Ah, break line. We have a line here is ground, so I should just have to connect it together. Right, so the selection is working. Now I did replace this button, though I neglected to record it. But now I've done that, I can actually see that the top of this button is smooth and these aren't. So I may replace these later. They're working, but I think I overheated these. Step button's not going. Okay. So the signals... Oh, hang on. We added the timing logic, so it actually does need a crystal in here. This is a 2 megahertz crystal, because I don't want to pull the other one out of the clock circuit just yet. OK, the clock's there, and the reset went off. Ah, so that's good. So the selection works. This should be running. I'm just going to bring the oscilloscope on. I believe the clock output is that on. Okay, that's not the frequency I would have expected. Looks like we've got multiple problems on this board. Ah, I think I put this on the wrong way around. Yeah, so it closes upwards. So that's one megahertz, which is what I'd expect if you invert these. That's not so bad. Not very clean output though, far from the worst. Let's have a look at the output pin. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so the capacitor charge is high constantly. All right, so the comparator inputs joined to... Oh. So this is a resistor, and that looks like the capacitor and the comparator inputs is being pulled up directly. That doesn't seem right. Here's the original circuit. So what we're seeing is this line getting pulled to high. And the resistor connected to that is actually going off to one of the inputs to the pot. So when I designed this circuit, or when I designed the schematic for this circuit, I was copying this directly without thinking too much about what it was doing. And that threshold should not be connected to 5 volts via a resistor. Um, that's what the discharge line should be doing. Discharge line, yeah, that's, that goes up to 5 volts and to one side of the potentiometer. And then the threshold line goes to middle tap on the potentiometer via this resistor. That looks to me like I've got them wrong, the wrong way around.
So need to think about the minimum possible bodge. Believe it or not, I'm actually kind of excited by this. This is going to be my first serious bodge. Right, so that connection is wrong. Somehow I think I need a much, much finer blade for doing this. I've got to cut this track here that I'm struggling on, and I've also got to cut this track. Okay, well it does look like I've removed some copper. And with that removed, Depends what a lot of the other components are doing. It's like there, I've definitely scratched it in the right place, but whether or not I've come close to breaking the connection, it's very hard to tell. Right, so the second connection we need to, need to make can be made from this capacitor, from this resistor to this capacitor. I'll turn on each. That I think is going to be fairly easy. Definitely joined now. So now we have to connect that to there. Now this one's going to be a bit more difficult because I'm actually supposed to be connecting it onto a pin. Not pretty, but I think it connects. I wish I could be more confident I've actually broken that connection. Now this is not insulated wire, so one thing I need to be careful of is that I'm not connecting it where it shouldn't be. Right. Now, I have a pretty high confidence that I've connected the wires where I wanted them, but not such a high confidence that I've disconnected the other ones. But that works. That's actually got a great range on it. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, so that was just a soldering error and no reason to swap that round. As far as I can visually determine, that's all working now. This bodge, I mean, it's messy, but swapping those two connections over, it's not the worst thing in the world. I will make a new one of these. I'm not in any hurry to do that. But what I think I can do, though, is relay out the tracks here without changing any of the component positioning, because then the stencil I've already got will let me redo that. And the stencil is a big chunk of the cost of doing a board like this. I think it's like $4 to uh, replace this because it's slightly longer than the minimum price. I think we should give this a try in the main build. Okay, well, it's certainly going to look good. Shouldn't need that. That needs to go out of the way. The one thing is, all of these extra support pins are going to make placing it difficult. Can we use this as an endoscope? They look well placed.
Okay, what the odds this works. I don't have the intermediate mode on this clock board because this trace mode is purely supposed to be kind of like this in interactive watch it do things. Okay, this appears to be working. Now, on this version of the clock, I did have this extra switch to let me switch out a larger capacitor. So this is working. It's produced the correct result. The only problem is my LCD module here. Probably find a new home temporarily over here. If I try and do that with the full speed clock, it will complete instantly, but it will never output anything there. That's interesting. I can see it outputting a bunch of stuff, but it's missing some characters because of the clock rate it's running at. So I really need to add the read back so I can implement the busy loop on the display. But I'm actually really pleased with this, even though I made this mistake and I was overdue a PCB error at some point. This is a pretty simple one and it's not going to be too bad to fix this. I'm going to leave it for a, a few weeks before I order the fresh PCB though because I'll just tag it on with some additional PCB orders. And that can replace that wire. Place that with a much shorter wire if I had one. Well, this is obviously a big step forward on neatness, even with the bodges. I will replace it, no hurry. But I really hope you found this interesting, and uh, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.